Hey, it's Carl at carcoart.com. One of the biggest frustrations I endured when I first started marketing my art for sale was bad photography. And I simply couldn't capture the aliveness of standing in front of my painting in a photograph. And back then, pre iPhone days, I had a small camera. And when I took photos of my art, I certainly didn't grasp the con concept of blocking out. So everything from the backyard lawn, dog toys, and the barbecue was visible in the background of my painting photographs. I did get better though. Nowadays, of course, smart technology phones allow us to take amazing photographs. And in addition to that, we have access to some of the most clever apps we can download onto our phones and help enhance the quality of images and make the whole process of photographing artwork a real breeze. So in this video, I'm going to Go through a simple yet highly effective process you can photograph your artwork from home with an iPhone and without requiring any expensive camera or equipment. Natural light is the best for photographing your art. Daylight is full of spectrum light. So this means it contains different waves of visible light. It's much brighter and it can illuminate a lot better than fluorescent light can. Fluorescent light will leave areas of reflected light on the surface of your artwork. So artificial light or fluorescent light won't capture the true density of color on your painting in a photograph. Let's look at how to photograph your artwork in a natural light. Any opportunity that you get to take photographs of your artwork outside rather than inside, it will benefit a much closer representation to your actual painting. Taking photos inside won't capture the true accuracy of color in your painting. So when taking photos outside, try to avoid your painting facing directly at the sun. This will create a glare on the surface of your painting in the photograph, which will also cause a misinterpretation of color in your work. Another frustration I have often encountered with trying to get good photos of my work outside is the weather. Now it can be windy, it can be wet, it can be cold, and sometimes it's just too hot. And what you can do is find a place outside slightly under cover. It could even be just inside the doorway and lay your painting down flat on the ground and then take the shot. Then if you need to, you can crop the main area of the painting without the frame. This then provides a better representation of the artwork without the shadows being cast from the framework. However, if your painting frame is included in the sale of your artwork, it may be worth including in the main photo. How do you photograph your artwork outdoors and capture the depth? Now, if your art has paint depth texture, you can capture it really well in natural light. Make sure the sun is not directly facing your artwork and is providing light from the side. Take your photos at either dawn or dusk, or even if it's slightly overcast. You can make better use of the direction of the light at these times of the day because the sun is lower as opposed to midday when the sunlight is directly cast from directly above. Also, the light is redder in the early morning, late afternoon and early evening, so you'll get better contrast and true color representation. If you look at my painting here, I photographed this painting early in the morning with the sun providing light from the side. So you can see the texture and the depth in the paint on the canvas and the thickness of the paint casts its own shadow. Using natural light indoors, if your only alternative is to take photographs of your artwork indoors, make the most of natural light. So try to get access to as much window light as you can. Even set your painting up near a window that's providing the right light. And what about getting the right perspective without the disfigurement. Perspective can often be a real challenge and it only takes a slight angle of the camera or perhaps your painting is not rested straight, resulting in the final image looking warped and out of perspective. So making sure the point of view on the camera matches the point of view of your painting will help to overcome this issue. And to fix the distorted perspective, go to the settings menu in your phone, select the camera app option, then push the slider to the right on the grid option. Now with the grid option turn, turn it on, it will help to level out your image in the viewfinder of your phone. There are additional apps that you can get to help automatically detect if you need to adjust your line of balance. And this will help adjust your painting level and establish how to make sure your iPhone camera is correctly upright. 
Now let's look at photographing your art without the bows and the bends. Do your images look stretched or warped? The bowed sides or curve away appearance in a photograph, it usually happens because the shot has been taken on a bad angle and it's out of focus. So the best solution is to create some distance between the camera and the artwork. And this will ultimately help to fix lens distortion and eliminate the bowed sides look and make it easier for cropping your main image. Cropping and removing clutter. When you have the image you like, it's good practice to crop out the surrounding clutter from the main composition, which of course is your painting. Simply select the twin right angle icon at the bottom of your phone. This function will also allow you to adjust the angle of the main image that you are cropping, and this will help to level out the image. Quite often your iPhone will try to adjust your level automatically. So if you find that you're trying to line up the level of your painting, use the straight edge tool. Select the ratio block icon at the top of your screen. This will then present the ratio options available at the bottom of your screen. This option will allow you to preview your crop selection. And when you're happy, you can select done. How to avoid blurry photos of your artwork. Now, if your photos are slightly blurry, it generally means you're taking your photos with an unsteady hand. And it can also be due to low lighting in the room. If your lighting is too dull, it becomes harder for the camera to properly capture a quality still shot. And the most common reason for a blurry photo is an incorrect use of shutter speed. And the best solution for elim eliminating a blurry photo is to use a tripod. Now, if you're in need of a tripod and you're on a budget, I recommend the Joby. It's small, it comes with a little remote control and the tripod doubles as a selfie stick. I also have an Archon, which is more expensive, yet it's multi-adjustable. Both options hold an iPhone perfectly for stable photos of your artwork. Having a little remote via Bluetooth to take your photos allows you to set a timer and be completely hands-free. And you can set three seconds on the timer, then stand back, click the button, and get a quality shot without any movement at all. You can also set a longer timer to enable you to personalize a photo on your painting. And set it for 10 seconds, giving you adequate time to get a photo with you standing next to your painting. Now let's look at setting the image conversion, the ICO and the shutter speed. Quite often an iPhone will default your image format to HEIT, which is high efficiency image format. And this can sometimes cause complications with software programs like Photoshop, not being able to read or configure the graphic file. The, the Moment app, it allows you to change the file format to JPEG. And JPEG images are compatible with almost all devices and software. And with the Moment app, you can also configure the ISO. ISO is the signal gain and sensitivity in a camera sensor. It allows you to control the exposure and increase or decrease the brightness. Set the ICO to 32, which is the standard with the Moment app. You can also adjust the shutter speed with the Moment app. The shutter speed measures how long the lens remain open in order to let the right level of light in. So set it between S1-17 and S-120. Shutter speeds are measured in fractions of a second. So if you're taking your photos outside in bright daylight, you ideally wanna set your shutter speed to around one to 500 or one to 1000 of a second. And this will reduce the amount of light passing through the sensor of your iPhone camera and avoid capturing an overexposed photograph of your artwork. How to avoid glare and reflection. The glare that you often get in a photograph image is due to an imbalance of light. Now, there are a few ways that you can avoid glare or reflection in your photographs. And one way is to turn off the flash on your iPhone. And if you've glossed your painting, a flash is simply going to reflect off it and bounce back at the lens and cause lens flare. Another way to prevent glare and reflections is to use a softbox lighting. Softboxes are great for indoor photography. I'm using them here right now. You can pick up a softbox photography lighting kit on Amazon for under $200 and a softbox controls the shape and direction of light more than an umbrella and it prevents more light spill from occurring. Now, if 
you're taking photos outside, you can simply avoid the glare by changing the position and direction of your iPhone so it's not hitting the direct light source from the sun. You can, of course, shade the lens of your iPhone. So you can consider using an umbrella and this will prevent the sunlight from entering your lens directly. Getting the color coordination correct. A white balance is a setting on a camera that adjusts the balance of color in your photograph. And white balance, it counteracts artificial colors like yellow and orange, for example. Our human eyes tend to have a different perception of colors than the auto detect on a camera sensor does. So what can often appear to be a nice balance of light and color to our human eyes is not necessarily detected by a camera. And you can adjust your white balance on the Moment app. Scroll across the bottom of the screen until you see AWB. Tap the AWB and you can then adjust the white balance and color temperature. Move the dial back and forth until you get the right balance. And keep adjusting until you're satisfied you have removed unrealistic color casts in your photograph. The standard white balance for daylight is around about 5600K. Hopefully this video has given you a little more insight into the ease of taking great photographs of your artwork with an iPhone. And I encourage you to utilize the pointers I have outlined in the video. It can only benefit the quality of imagery you produce to better showcase your artwork. And great quality photographs of your artwork will provide you with confidence and the ability to really showcase your artwork to the world. So subscribe to this channel if that's what you do and thanks so much for dropping by. I do appreciate it. Till next time, stay creative.